Hello there. What is going on, everyone? Today, we are going to be taking a look at the Clone Z95 Headhunter expansion for X-Wing. And uh, this is the most drastic different change of a ship uh, that we've seen for, like, you know, what I thought might have initially been like a repaint. Uh, and we will be doing a comparison of the Clone Z Z95 to the original models that they had for the Z95 as well. If you guys are new here, I invite you to subscribe. Uh, check out the links we have down in the description below. Of course, we do giveaways all the time. If you ever want to have a chance to enter to win one of those, you just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. Also, I want to thank today's sponsor, Luxury Playstyle. We have amazing full metal tokens from Luxury Playstyle. You can check out. They are all gorgeous. They are double-sided. Uh, and some, some of them you have completely different tokens on the other side as well, which is very, very cool. Um, and I, they come in a variety of different finishes, so I especially love these. You're going to absolutely love them. Orders of $35 or more that use code CRABLOCKVIP are going to get a free Crabbox Lightsaber Nunchuck token thrown in. You can get the five on the back. You can mark damage with that or light side versus dark side. The, for X-Wing specifically, you can use this to mark critical hits. Uh, for If you play Legion and you're picking some of the Legion tokens up, you can use that to mark your commander. Or you can just flip a coin light versus dark or mark extra damage in other games. Uh, if you use code Crabbox VIP, you're also going to save 15%. So uh, check out Luxury Playstyle. And, uh, and let's get on with this video here. We've got some uh, got a lot uh, to look at in this pack. We've got some upgrade cards. We're going to look at those. We're going to look at the, the models themselves. We're going to look at the cardboard. Uh, and then we'll do a comparison of this ship to the, uh, to the original ship as well. All right. So first off, we've got some very, very wide and thin. I almost thought this was uh, like a fake ship. Here we go. And you gotta be careful popping it up uh, because it was it seemed so thin. So here we go with with the clone Z95. It is definitely in that Clone Wars kind of animated uh, style, which is cool. And we've got uh, we do have a little bit of paint there in the engines too, just a little. It's it's kind of hard to see because it's such a small, little thin narrow engine uh, engine hole there but we do we do have it um and we've got the again the little front bits on the side right there which you can kind of see uh and and very cool so um let's see I, I don't think there's any difference between the two different versions um and this is yeah let me let me uh well not versions but the two different included models i think they are pretty much identical if i hold them up next to each other here they look the same check the underneath yep only, only difference is slightly different bits of some of the shading. Some of the shade didn't really go into these recesses there as well. But um, other than that, like it's a, it's a really nice sculpt. Um, it's a pretty good paint application, and uh, you know, consistent with uh, you know what we typically see from X Wing. So uh, really nice looking miniatures. Very cool stuff. Uh, we'll, uh, you know, I want to. I want. I'm going to go ahead and do the comparison now. So let's go ahead and compare these. So. Um, this is the original Z95 that we had for X-Wing right here. This is um, massively different in size, right? I've got them right next to each other. You can see that, like, huge, huge difference. Like, this is, it's like this guy's, like, saying, uh, like, don't you talk to my son ever again. You know, like, like look at that. It's, uh, here, I'm going to put it right on top. It's completely dwarfed by the other one there we go so really really huge now the z95 has had a number of different changes and just for consistency uh well I mean, there's there's a lot there's a, there, i think there's been more z95s than any other ship in the game um so you know we've got that ridiculous amount of z95s uh tie fighter might be a close second i'm not sure i'm trying to just doing that off the top of my head but uh but yeah, I was surprised that they made this one so different. Like, I just thought it was going to be another repaint. And it's a whole different sculpt, like a whole different ballpark, which is wild. Um, let's take a look at our uh, expansion box contents, expansion pack contents. This is going to be everything that we're going to be looking at. Uh, we've got, of course, we've got plenty of cardboard and, and upgrade cards to look at. And we've got our little rules uh, excerpt right here. And then, of course, we have our, our credits pack. Uh, Michael Gernis and Max Brook working on this. Uh, particular uh, expansion. Big thanks to everybody that helped bring this to us. Let's go ahead and uh, we got our two bases here. 
And the, uh, the bases do say LFL and AMG on them. I don't know. So that's uh, one of the new things that we've been starting to see lately with, uh, with stuff. We don't have that little FFG logo on these anymore. Um, there we go. LFL, AMG. Speaking of bases, AMG, if you are listening, definitely recommend coming out with new bases since this is like, hey, you know what? We can do new bases. We can, you know, they, they, this is obviously a reprinted base, right? Let's do new bases in the alternate color schemes again. Like that was a big hit. And since 2.0 and since we've had medium bases, I think people would really like getting alternate bases um, and especially alternate color schemes or replacement bases and uh, and even ones for Armada, too. I think uh, th that would be a big hit. So, so, you know, keep in mind. Don't rule out bases. All right, let's, 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 let's get deeper into this. All right, so we've got our cardboard here. We've got our tokens. One big sheet. We actually have three, three sheets of cardboard. We've got all of our, our ship, our ship uh, inserts here. This is one of the things that drives me kind of crazy about, uh, about X-Wing when they did the 2.0. I'm like, they could have just went to a single ship insert for every ship since you have to mark them with a, a, a number. Anyway, you gotta mark them with a number anyway, and all the information is already on the card. Why do we need a separate one? That's something I never understood. I feel like there's a reason that I'll never know, but maybe someday, like, I'll, it'll be illuminated to me. Um, but yeah, that's, that's like the, the one thing that always perplexed me. And then of course we have our dials here. Uh, and and uh, of course we have the dial, which is going to be the same as the Z95 that we've already seen. So uh, so yeah. And now I know some people have asked, like, hey, can you use like a, a regular Z95 with this one if you don't like the model, or if you wanted, or vice versa? And uh, I believe according to the latest rules, you you basically it's like a soft yes that yeah, sure you can, but it is going to be up to the TO because I can understand maybe. I, honestly, I can't understand any reason why you wouldn't want somebody to use, uh, you know, mix and match their Z95 models. Because it's not like you're mixing matching factions. It's not like there's really any case where it could be confusing to your opponent. At least not one that I can think of. Unless you were doing some kind of mixed format where you're mixing factions. And like for some kind of homebrew event. Uh, in that case, then I could see it being confusing. But if you want to basically mix and match your, your models, you totally can. All right, we've got cards to look at. So first off, let's look at pilot cards. Got Warthog, and we got a lot of stuff to get through, so I'm not going to read all the text on them. I'll just kind of make sure they're there, so you can pause if you want. Um, we're going to look at Hawk, and we've got Killer, and we've got Boost. Really great artwork on that one. I mean, these are, these all have really good artwork, but some of them really stand out to me. Uh, I, I love the artists that they're able to. Uh, that they're able to get to you know contribute to this game. We've got drift there, and just really the art helps bring the cards alive and helps helps make the game uh, you know feel that much more thematic and makes it feel Star Wars. You know, we've got slider, we've got stug or stub rather, not stug. <laughs> stub reading is fundamental. Uh, we have uh, Reaper Squadron Scout. We have two of those, and then we have two versions of the seventh. Skycore pilot. All right, we've got upgrades we're going to look at as well. Um, so we've got two copies of Advanced Proton Torpedoes. We've got two copies of Angled Deflectors. We've got two copies of Enduring. We've got two copies, you're seeing a trend here, right, with the fire control system. We've got two copies of Homing Torpedoes. And we have, for some reason, one copy of Ion Torpedoes. You can pronounce those Torpedoes if you'd like. It's, I, I've heard that that is totally legal. We've got two copies of Magpulse Warheads. We've got two copies of the ever-famous Marg Sable Closure. Uh, we have one copy of Squad Leader, and that one makes sense because it's unique. And we have two copies of the XX23S Thread Tracers. Last but not least, we do have the quick builds. I'm not sure how much longer these are going to be really viable for since they're coming out with the new standard loadouts uh, with the next uh, Battle of Yavin pack, although that, that looks interesting too. But these are also here to help you uh, just get right into the game if, uh, if, you know, if points ever change or become unavailable and you just want to play the quick builds. That's uh, definitely always going to be a format uh, that, you, that you have the option to play as. So we've got Boost, Drift, and Hawk on that one. We've got... Slider, Killer, and Warthog on this one. 
We've got two more. We've got Knack and Reaper Squadron Scout. And then we've got Stub and the 7th Sky Corps Pilot right there. All right, so that is going to do it for the clone Z95 Headhunter. This is, uh, and, and, and it, again, one thing is it is its own ship, right? It is a clone Z95 Headhunter, so uh, that kind of is a justification for why it's a whole different model here. Um, but still, I, you know, I think it's I think this, it's going to be okay if you wanted to swap these out. Um, it could be because again, you're supposed to be having fun while you're gaming. If you're in a super highly competitive event. And somebody has a problem with it, then then of course maybe the TO will say otherwise. But so yeah, I guess what I would suggest is you know if you want to swap them, swap them, but always have the the correct ones available just in case. That's you can't go wrong with that, you know. And uh, and yeah, so there we go. All right, guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching and hanging out with me today as I play with my ships and make whooshy whooshy noises as they fly off into the distance. So with all that being said. Uh, have a, may the force be with you. Have a great day and goodbye there.